Hello everyone, how are you? This is Dr. Kim speaking. Welcome to my radiology channel. Today we're going to see what happens to maxillary sinus if there's a presence of inflammatory lesions in the maxillary molars. So now looking at this periapical radiograph, number 14 is deemed unresorable and this tooth was extracted and also grafted for implant placement. But Let's take a moment to take a look at tooth number 15. Yes, we do see a large um, a, a crown, looks like a PFM. And how would you assess the periapical area? I wish we had another periapical radiograph that fully captures the entire uh, length and the width of the tooth, but this is as far as it goes back. And does this area look suspicious to you or do they appear normal? So we are going to take a look at how this area appears in chromium CT as well as the floor of the maxillary sinus. So let's take a look. let's try to follow the floor of the maxillary sinus as best as we can. I see this outline, I see another outline, and this looks like an outline and maybe this is an outline outline as well right so let's go ahead uh, take a look at that why are we seeing these two lines one that's smooth and then the one that go appears to dive into this area so let's see how they appear okay and perhaps there's another outline right so here we go uh, looking at the sagittal view uh, it's fairly clear that there is um, a graft material which has been fully healed at this point. So let me scroll through the volume and I want you to see the floor of the maxillary sinus that is continuously changing which can also be seen here. Here's the floor and it goes up and comes down a little bit right here so it's constantly changing right it goes down goes back up and goes down again so it's very important to keep in mind that the floor of the maxillary sinus varies and because of that and the angulation of the uh, x-ray that is um, coming in to take a periapical radiograph you can see potentially multiple floors of the maxillary sinus on periapical radiograph representing this line and this line and this line and that's explained in White and Farrow's textbook as an eggshell effect where you can see the border of the egg if you were to take a radiograph of, a, of an egg. So now um, let's go over to number 15. So there we go. Okay, there are a lot of things that we can pick apart and recognize. Um, first and foremost, I think what I want to say is here we have a crown that we saw previously, but this area they try to um, repair perhaps the margin of the crown, which became unsuccessful. You can see there's a cavitation. But more importantly, I hope you can see that this restorative material encroaches onto the pulpal chamber right there. There's a communication with the pulpal chamber and the restoration, hence you have a pulpal exposure. So that's one thing to note. Second, yes, there's a large periapical radiolucency right a very very large periapical radiolucency which has clearly lifted up and elevated the floor of the maxillary sinus here again let's try to trace the maxillary sinus okay, so you can see that it has elevated the floor of the sinus significantly not only that it may have perforated the maxillary sinus as we fail to lose I mean, we fail to see the continuous uh, corticated outline of the floor right here. A couple of the things to note 
is that there is a significant resorption of the root. That's not a typical root anatomy or morphology uh, for it to end such bluntly as shown here. Look here also the way it's been resorbed. That tells me that there is an infection or inflammation in this area for quite some time. Look over here. This ring that we see inside of the maxillary sinus represents the elevated floor of the maxillary sinus cut in the axial view. So those are some of the important things to notice but going back to what I wanted to talk about yes what happens there's an inflammation associated with the maxillary molar uh, ha what happens to the maxillary sinus. Um, it's fairly clear that there is an increased inflammation of uh, maxillary sinus lining or mucosal lining over the area of infection. If you, if you evaluate the entire flow of the maxillary sinus, that thickening is predominantly over this area and here, right? Not so much this part of the uh, part of the uh, sinus. So let's look at in the coronal section as well. Here the sinus is clear and then as you go toward the tooth there's increased thickening of the sinus lining. Let's also take a look at that in the axial view. Here again is the medial, anterior lateral, posterior lateral wall of the maxillary sinus. It's predominantly clear in the anterior half of the uh, sinus and as you go toward the posterior half, yes, there is mucosal thickening. So this is a mucosal thickening as a result of dental infection or inflammation. So hope you find uh, this interesting and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.